Hi and welcome to SCW, the wrestling channel here on YouTube.com. Thank you for choosing the channel and choosing the video. Please subscribe right now. Leave any comments in the comment section. Please like and share the video as well. Ask SCW back once again, answering your questions in the wrestling community. You can get involved on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. All should be coming up on your screen right now. And of course, you can also leave a comment here on youtube.com just do it in the comments of this video always leave the hashtag ask scw and i make sure to know to answer your question in the next video here on youtube so without further ado let's get straight in with the first question this week comes from sports with luke why does vince continue to bury talent to old guys aj to taker and the fiend to goldberg ask scu Keep up the great work. Well, I did actually ask um, Frankie Kazarian, Christopher Daniels, and Scorpio at Sky, but sadly, um, I didn't get an answer. But they did tell me that where I am is the worst town they've ever been in. But um, seriously, though, uh, I do appreciate the question. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know why Vince continues seems to, seems to bury the talent, but my feeling is is that this particular moment, uh, a lot of the older guys are coming in for WrestleMania this year. And there are rumours that WrestleMania is going to be sold as its rights uh, to another streaming service or to a television company. And obviously these names are household names that casual fans would know that would get people intrigued to watch and politely uh, would intrigue investors to put money to buy this product. Because uh, with Goldberg as the champion, okay, for fans, it's we need to look ahead to the future uh, with people like The Fiend and AJ Styles. But... I mean, these guys are bigger talents in the public eye. Um, of course, looking at someone like maybe yourself or maybe me, we say and say we need to build and look towards the future. And the way you do that is for the new guys to go over the older guys. But sadly, um, WWE continues to put the legends over, which of course effectively doesn't make new stars. Now, you can say that superstars get a rub from being in the ring with certain talents, but if we look at Super Showdown, um, and we look at those those like you say there, AJ Styles lost with one choke slam. Now, in one way, I sort of forgive that one a little bit more than The Fiend because AJ Styles has lost before. The shock value, AJ wasn't taking the match seriously, felt he knew he was going to win, uh, beating an R Truth that had been in the ring for so long. And then obviously, uh, you know, Rey Mysterio was taken out by the OC. Uh, so then the Undertaker came out. It was all about the shock value, it was all about coming in the ring. Yeah, one choke slam was a bit weak for, for the victory. I think my main problem with it was that the hat and the jacket wasn't taken off. And that was my main issue. Um, but when we looked towards The Fiend, there was like a year's worth of solid booking to keep this guy strong, um, making him champion. And then he goes and loses in less than three minutes to a 50-year-old part-timer. It just damages the character so much. And um, even when I look at him on SmackDown this week, I felt like I was looking at a different Bray Wyatt. Uh, particularly even as The Fiend, he just came out and pointed at the sign of John Cena. He felt like a, a lost child um, that was dressed for Halloween. He just didn't have a good look. It didn't fit the character. It just it didn't work for me. And I don't know, that there is this sense that the aura of Bray Wyatt could be lost now that he's lost. But I really hope as fans that we can really stick behind him. And uh, I hope... At WrestleMania, he's going to get his win back uh, with a major win over John Cena. Um, I mean, that's the way that it, this can be protected, is if at WrestleMania, these legends then do the job to the younger talent. Because maybe on Super Showdown, a lot of people are have got their opinions of whether the show should go ahead, not go ahead, whether they watch it or don't. That's up to them. But as a wrestling product, nothing quite beats WrestleMania. That is when all the casual fans that don't watch wrestling throughout the entire year, they'll come in for WrestleMania and they'll see who is the star this year, who is the people to watch out for. Yes, they're going to see a lot of familiar names, but that is part of what will draw them in. Uh, but if they lose to the younger guys, they get this idea of, right, these are the people then that are going to be the people going forward. The big thing then is that next year at WrestleMania, those people still need to be the people in contention. If you watch New Japan Pro Wrestling, and I'm a casual New Japan watcher, Okada is always near the main event or in the main event and whoever the superstar is he's facing you know that you're taking them seriously because Okada is in the ring with them and it's just knowing of when to push and elevate that next level of talent but each year I always feel like that the talent I watched from the year before they are improving I mean I tend to watch a lot of the bigger shows I watch uh, Wrestle Kingdom, New Year's Dash, Dominion um, but I don't watch all the other shows so for me to see uh, the way that someone goes from year to year with a big gap in between um, you can see how someone has improved. And I think that that's something that from casual fans going to WrestleMania, 
that's how they see which talents have improved. If we look at last year, Kofi Kingston become WWE champion. This year, he's not even the tag champion. He's back in this tag team of the New Day. He's just sunk, and you kind of think that importance of last year didn't carry into this year. So for casual fans, it's extremely important they, they recognize the talents, and I think that that is the main reason why some like Goldberg and The Undertaker are still going over. Brock Lesnar as well destroyed Ricochet. Um, we didn't expect Ricochet to, to win that match, but I wanted to see something a bit closer, something a bit more exciting, and we didn't quite get that. So for me, that's a big reason why I think that they continue to do that, and I think it's all about money at the end of the day. But the big question is, in 10, 15, 20 years from now, you cannot rely on these legends. They're going to be 70 years old. You're not going to be able to rely on them. So who are you going to go to then? Um, it's, it's a big thing. They do need to start making new stars in the next 10 years uh, within WWE that can carry the company going forward. Next question comes from Dylan Ketchum. And uh, he asks, um, who do you want to win again between Goldberg and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania? Well, I sort of answered that in the, the, the last question in a way. Uh, Roman Reigns, it's no-brainer. Um, the only thing I'm sort of okay with this match being put together, um, because I think Roman Reigns beating The Fiend first, that heat would have gone on Roman Reigns. You could argue that Vince McMahon has done something very clever in a way, because the heat has all gone on Goldberg, a part-timer. It's not going to affect him long-term. He's just there for the short payday, and he's going to go away again. Roman Reigns as well like Goldberg, never got his Universal Championship rematch. Uh, Roman Reigns, of course, had to forfeit the belt, of course, when he was out with leukemia. Uh, he's come back. He's not had a title match. He's not been shoved down our throats in the main event. The time is now for Roman Reigns to win that belt back, and people are not going to mind it against Goldberg. You can say it's a stroke of genius, but it's destroyed the Fiend in, in, in one way in the meantime. But Roman Reigns, for me, has to go over at WrestleMania. It's the right time and I mean it's the battle of the spears it's a match that people will be interested in seeing uh, but it's a match that shouldn't go over five minutes for me Roman Reigns has to become uh, universal champion and I'm okay with the way the match was put together as well purely because of the fact that we all knew he was going to win the chamber match why waste our time with that but uh, we will come to that a little bit later in the video uh, next question comes from George Jones. This is from Facebook, this one. Um, he says, WrestleMania will have 16 matches. Too many or just right? Well, if the rumor mill is correct, then yet that's the amount of matches that will be on WrestleMania. I do think it's too many, if I'm being brutally honest, because um, if you look at like old WrestleManias, WrestleMania 7, 8, a lot of matches lasted like three or four minutes and they could fit that many matches on the card. Now, they might do that with, with this year's WrestleMania. I'm not sure. But my feeling with it is that a lot of matches, we expect to see 15, 20 minute matches. So, and if we've got a, like five, six, seven hour show to have 16 matches, you feel like I'm going to be sitting here for ages. And I don't know. I, for me, it just feels too many. Now, if WrestleMania was split over two nights and you had eight matches on one night, eight on the next maybe one match each night is a kickoff match and then you have seven matches on your main show. I kind of would be in favour of it, as not to go back to New Japan again, but we, we see that with Wrestle Kingdom this year, did it over two nights. I think it worked spectacularly. They actually used night one as well for storylines to build in towards the night two. I think that would be a really good idea. The only thing with it is the cost of having a stadium two nights in a row and uh, would that cost the fans a lot in pocket. Um, but as for a one night WrestleMania, I think 12 is the maximum that should be there. Um, I think that fans will get burnt out with 16 matches. I think it's too many. Um, for a kickoff, if you have 12 matches and you have two or three on a kickoff, and then you have, like I say, it's nine or 10 on the main show, I think for me, that's just right. Next question comes from Antonio. Do you think Vince McMahon will ever stop using writers or scripted promos in WWE? Uh, writers never. They'll always have some form of writers, but I suppose um, if you have one or two writers like we did in the Attitude Era, or if we have a table of team of like 24 writers. Um, I think that's a big issue. I think that they should always trim it down to have less people involved. Um, but uh, I know WWE has, has probably taken some efforts to try and improve their writing in the last 12 months. And of course, it'll be like Paul Heyman, Bruce Pritchard, uh, respectively, uh, taking over Raw and SmackDown and uh, making their stamp of approval of what makes these shows um, better. And I think that those shows have improved over the last six to eight months. So I do think it's going in a good direction. As for scripted promos, I did read something online that apparently WWE is looking to come away from that. In fact, I read that on NoDQ. I actually, at the time, do believe that Heath Slater actually uh, retweeted that as well, which makes me feel that 
there could be something in that. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but um, yeah, scripted promos for me, they only go so far. It's good when it comes from the heart. You will get obvious little worries, um, like from AEW's Revolution. John Moxley took a bit of a long pause and they, they played his music and was like, hey, what the hell? I've not finished. Uh, I'm making this stuff up as I go along. Um, okay, it was kind of a cool moment, end of the show. Uh, but at the same time, um, you don't want to see too much of that. So I kind of think bullet points are the best way to go through. Make sure you hit this this target, this target, this target, and aim to get to here at the end. Um, I think that that's the best way to get it, because you can sort of say, well, this is some scripted angle. I want you to go in this direction, but the promo can feel more organic. I think that would be the best way going forward. Next question comes from Tire World Order. Revolution spoilers. That's it. Go forward if you've not seen Revolution yet. What should Chris Jericho do next? Revolution was a great cap on one of uh, Jericho's best title runs in any promotion. Can he remain valuable to AEW without the big belt? Without question, he could be. Uh, he's so valuable to that company. I mean, he's got the Talkers Jericho podcast. Uh, we've got the, the Rock and Roll Wrestling Cruise. I mean, Jericho has done so much for that promotion without, with, if he'd not even become champion. But of course, he is almost arguably uh, the Goldberg of of AEW. He's the old guy, and people haven't got a problem with it. He's he's the casual name. People thought it was the right booking decision to have this guy as champion. He was champion for around six months, or even over six months. Uh, I believe it was a 182-day reign. Uh, but yeah, he can make new stars. Jericho has done such a great job as champion, and you know he's making new stars just having the inner circle. So uh, Jericho has got a lot of value to that company. And to carry that question on with armchair wrestling, uh, where does the inner circle go from last night? Does Jericho just take up a managing role for the group, or does he have someone like Swagger go for the belt or do they focus on another group? So there's lots of different ideas just in that question alone that Jericho could do. I mean, yeah, I mean, I expect at one point Jericho could be a manager. Um, I don't think that that will happen sometime in the near future, but um, certainly would be interesting with him pushing Swagger, reversing that role. Um, I'd be very intrigued in seeing that because, for me, I still just feel, and we say Swagger, though, it's, of course it's Jake Hager, isn't it? But... Um, I just wasn't as invested in Hager's match with, with Dustin Rhodes. I feel that perhaps it's something because two failed WWE stars or, or you know aging stars that just didn't have the, the the connection for me. And I thought it was perhaps the wrong match to open the night. But um, that's just some personal opinion. From, from what looked of the uh, arena, a lot of people seem to enjoy it. And I do think that the match actually... Um, was better than what it would have been in a WWE environment by a long way. So I'm not criticising the match to that level. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, the Inner Circle could go for another group. Of course, there's lots of mini factions that could always expand as well. I mean, you've got the best friends, Vorich Cassidy. Uh, we've got SCU. I mean, could we see them perhaps turn face at one stage and go against the Dark Order? Or perhaps the most likely would be the Elite. I mean, that's what everyone's probably waiting for me to say, right? We've got Blood and Guts coming up for us next. And uh, well, I mean, we're going to have... Two rings, one cage, you know the rest. So, I mean, it makes sense to make a faction. WWE have done war games with Undisputed Era. So, I mean, it would make so much sense initially to do that uh, with the Inner Circle. I think Jericho should go and try and get the belt back originally. And maybe in the next six months, like you say, his, his attention can go elsewhere. Uh, but Jericho's got so much more he can still prove for AEW in ring at the moment. He can make some new stars. People will be interested just because Jericho's in the ring. Uh, and then later on, yeah, a managing role would be good. At some point, the inner circle needs to, you know, will need to sort of break apart just to make those guys, you know, not too stifled in that that stable and become uh, their own stars within the company i think that that will need to happen at some point in the future maybe a year from now we're not even talking near future uh, and maybe long long term chris jericho he's done a little bit of commentary work for aew could he go on to that sort of side of things in a couple of years time when he's decided he's had enough of being in the ring time will tell but for aew jericho is gold he's got so much value and he will give so much to that company Next question, Too Sweet Wrestling, Racing for Revolution, 1 to 10. Great question. I thought Revolution was a good show. I really liked it. Um, for me, personally, I'm going to give it a 7.5 um, because I thought that um, the show was very well paced out. Um, like I said, I, I kind of thought the right... Uh, the first match was probably the wrong match to keep the show off for me, but um, it was one of the minors of what was a decent show. Uh, I felt there were some sleeper matches in there or some matches that, you know, were... 
not the best matches, but I think they were well positioned in the card. You know, you had what was supposed to be your important matches. You put a match that you can relax in between it. And I thought that was very clever to do that on that show because there were three major matches and uh, they made sure that your attention and focus was made for all of those matches. So uh, for me, yeah, I'm going to give it a solid 7.5 and I'm going to go on to my favorite match, which uh, comes on to um, our next question or our next comment, actually, from this one from Chris Sloan. Uh, Hangman putting off the one winged angel to save Kenny was the hypest thing I've seen in a long time. Just hope the elite can last through this. Well, that was my favourite match. That tag team match by a long way was absolutely amazing. Uh, but I think it's one of the best tag team matches I've seen in a long time. And I actually think it's a match of the year contender. For me, at the moment, the best match I've seen of the whole year is going to go to this one. Um, they just knew how to pull little triggers and storytelling throughout that to tell a great story for 30 solid minutes. I mean... I thought that the, the Iron Man match was decent, but I thought this was even better. Um, I loved the tease at the end of the match as well with Hangman, uh, where he could turn on Kenny, uh, even though they were still tag team champions. And at the end, it was like, no, we're coming out of the ring together. We're going to leave together. For me, it's very clear that the, the double cross is happening somewhere along the line, just to answer your part of the question. Um, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. Will it happen at blood and guts inside that steel structure we'll have to wait and see that for me would be a really cool place for it to happen um i would be very interested as well to see how long they remain tag team champions because that's an interesting twist to this you almost feel that the second they drop the belts could be the second that 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 double cross happens it didn't happen on, on the revolution pay-per-view but it will happen somewhere just to continue with giving a small review for the rest of the pay-per-view i loved mjf and cody it was the right result all day long, uh, MJF picking up the victory. It just gives him that heat so much. And the crowd, the energy was sucked out. And it just shows how good storytelling was in that match as well. Uh, MJF is going to be a cocky little shit, isn't he, when it comes to that next Revolution show. And I'm looking forward to seeing how cocky he's going to be. Is he going to end up in that steel structure? We'll have to wait and see. There's a lot of uh, you know things that are going to carry on from this event into Dynamite. Dynamite is must-see this week. Um, You cannot prioritize nxt over dynamite they've been doing some great shows of AEW right now and uh, i'm looking forward to seeing it with the main event of jericho and moxie i thought it was a solid match um i think that they did some good storytelling i think it was probably the weakest of the three matches that we you know that i've discussed there but um no i thought it was a, i thought it was a good match still and i think it was the right result it was the right time for jericho to drop the belt moxie is the right guy i'm interested to see where moxie is going to take that belt going forward Next question comes from Get Cho at Wrestling Podcast. Does last night or is it a couple of days, maybe depending on when you're watching, it could be a few days, uh, AEW Revolution show solidify Chicago as one of the top wrestling cities in the country? I feel Chicago has always been in the top two, if not the top city, but uh, always gets overlooked for major pay-per-views, unlike New York City, LA, or anywhere in Florida. Well, it's definitely number one, I think, when you look um, for AEW. That's their number one market. They've done quite a few pay-per-view shows in Chicago. So without question, it is the top dog. From someone who doesn't live in the United States, um, I really like this question. It's a very interesting question to actually tackle and answer. Um, I have it in the top three, uh, personally. I'm always excited when I hear a show is going to be in Chicago because the fan base is so passionate. It reminds me of a UK crowd, and that's why I absolutely adore you know, I adore hearing a show is going to be in Chicago. You usually get Brock Lesnar, the guy is uh, there as well. He's always in the crowd somewhere doing his usual Brock Lesnar stuff. Uh, so, I mean, there's always some entertaining, you know, things to look out for in, in Chicago crowds. They're passionate, they're bloodthirsty. And uh, yeah, I mean, for me, they're always in the top ones. When you look of overlooked, I agree for like a WrestleMania, for example, I think maybe could it be weather related? I mean, I'm saying I don't live in the States, but I mean, WWE likes to do their WrestleManias usually with with warmer climates, which I think is why Florida is always so popular. Um, LA, I think, will of course have the, the the weather factor. I know New York City is is the number one, and when I think WWE, I always think New York because of Madison Square Garden. I'm a long term fan. I've always felt uh, that New York is the number one place for WWE. Um, and I know that that's not the warmest climate to do a WrestleMania, for example, but um, I don't know, so many memorable historic moments have took place there that you just can't ignore the New York market. But um, 
I, I do feel that for me, uh, in WWE terms, I would see Chicago as in the top three. For AEW, it's number one. From an outsider perspective, I'm excited every time there's a Chicago show. I think it's, uh, like I said, there's always a lot to look forward to. And uh, yeah, from, from an outsider's perspective, I know that uh, we've got a passionate crowd who's going to give everything to the product, uh, which elevates the superstars, which elevates the show in general. And uh, yeah, I know that Chicago, we're getting a good product. Next question comes from Jaxi Scarlett. Seriously, wasn't it announced there was a SmackDown Elimination Chamber? What happened to that? Well, uh, we sort of touched on it a little bit earlier on. Um, Roman Reigns, yes, was advertised uh, to be involved in the Elimination Chamber match. And uh, spoiler alert, he was due to win it. So I think the thing that in the room we will suggest that... Uh, Apparently, everyone knew Roman Reigns was going to win it, which, yeah, that's what was going to happen. We we kind of all figured it out. Why make us sit through in probably 45 minutes to an hour chamber match for something we already kind of feel was obvious? Especially when we've got two of them that are obvious that don't think Shayna Baszler's not winning that chamber match either. So they changed up on SmackDown. They put the SmackDown Tag Team Championships available instead, and it will be the second ever, I believe, uh, tag team chamber match. I could be wrong. No, it's the third one because we've had the women's one and we had one, I believe, at Elimination Chamber 2015. I think that this has got potential to be the best Elimination Chamber match on the night and possibly best tag team one that we've had uh, so far. There's so many exciting elements to the, of the six teams that have been involved with it. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's a positive booking move. And like I would say, if we knew Roman Reigns was going to win it, why waste our breath? If they had to do a number one contendership thing for him, they could have done it just as a main event element on SmackDown. Just do that. 10 minutes, done. Don't need to waste a pay-per-view slot on it. Here, we've got maybe a less important match for the Chamber now for SmackDown, but I think a much more exciting one and a less predictable one. So uh, I think that this is a positive move from WWE. Next question comes from Mike. Um, Italian Habs Mike. With Davey Boy Smith rumoured to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame long overdue, and I agree, uh, who should induct Davey? I think Bret Hart makes the most sense and let Davey's kids and Diana Hart do the speech. If surely will be, um, uh, it surely will be an, an emotional induction and speech. I 100% agree with everything you've just said there. I almost don't need to answer it because it's that well put. Um, I do feel that Bret Hart is someone that make a lot of sense. Um, but I think Davy Boy's son, I believe he was on, on WWE Bump. Um, of course, Davy Boy Smith Jr., former WWE superstar. Recently, he's been involved with uh, Japan. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, rumors are that he could come and uh, to do that. And of course, he's one of Davy's kids. Um, but I'd be quite in favor of Dinah giving a speech as well. Um, I think all of them would be great contenders for it, or all, all of the above. Um, the only thing with that, I suppose, that uh, the Hall of Fame has been uh, arguably, in some people's opinions, dragged previously, and I think WWE has looked to try and trim the time down. So if we're only going to have one, I would go with uh, with David Boy Smith Jr., uh, his son, because I think it just would be a nice touch. But of course, uh, the British Bulldog isn't alive, sadly, to, to, to accept that. So I think that they could give a couple of people that spot. And uh, I mean, we touched up with Amin Hart a couple of weeks ago on, on this, and uh, I think Diana, uh, David Boy Smith Jr., would be, would be a nice touch. And if Brett wants to be involved as well, why not? I'm in favor for all. I think that, uh, I think you put it perfectly, personally. Uh, Nubin Co is coming up for us next now with a few questions for us. If Shayna wins the Royal Women's title at WrestleMania, who will be her first feud after Mania, Natalia or Oscar? Is WWE's focus on Oscar as a singles competitor or as a tag team champion because it really upsets everyone? And uh, which main roster star you don't want to return to NXT? Interesting questions. Three interesting questions there. Um, well, first off, if Shayna Baszler was to uh, actually uh, become Royal Women's Champion at WrestleMania, which I think is very likely, um, I would turn Charlotte face. Um, I don't know if Becky is going to take hiatus after uh, WrestleMania. We'll have to wait and see. That's been rumoured. But I think it'd be a good time to bring, um, you know, uh, Shayna's back up to the main roster and get a bit of the four horsemen women kind of rivalry going on. Maybe Ronda, if she comes back. I mean, it's very... Very, very unlikely Ronda will come back. But, I mean, Charlotte Flair has done more face and heel turns than the big show in the last 12 months. But um, I think that the big money match, if Shayna was to become the Royal Women's Champion, is Charlotte Flair. Uh, and I don't think Charlotte Flair at this point will be defeating Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania. We need to make Ripley a star. So, um, for me, I think the big match would be Shayna versus Charlotte. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was either of the two people that you were mentioning. Um, with Oscar, uh, they're just trying to build her up as a monster. I mean, personally, I'm not upset with the way she's been booked. Uh, I think she's been booked a lot more strongly in the last four to five months. 
uh, as a tag team champion and as a singles competitor. I feel she's got a mojo back, and uh, I, I'm really excited to see her direction. I'm even starting to enjoy her promo work, um, even though I don't understand half of what's going on, to be brutally honest. But um, I did see that um, there was uh, WWE Japan that she gave a translation for her promo work, and I actually really enjoyed it. And uh, although I know we can't really get uh, subtitles for when she talks on the telly, because it would be kind of obvious it's really scripted, um, I would love to see a translator brought in just to give a little bit of that edge because uh, I, I think that Oscar has actually got a lot to say and very menacing as a promo. So I, I'm interested to see what she can bring to the table personally from a talking standpoint. Um, but at, at the moment, I say, I think she's going to be booked as a tag team champion going into WrestleMania uh, when she goes through the chamber because if rumours are true, I believe that uh, those belts are going to be on the line. At the moment, I suppose you could say if you have a problem with it, I mean, Kyrie Sane has just got married uh, she also has suffered a concussion. So I think WWE has probably just looked to book around the situation rather than having them drop the belts or have to forfeit the belts. So I think that's kind of what really has been the issue there. But um, yeah, I mean, Oscar for me has been booked pretty well. I'm, I'm, I'm being okay with it, even though she's been doing double duty as a single and tag team competitor. Um, last you asked there, which remains roster star you don't want to return to NXT. Well, there's a list of them, really. Um, the main event talents, really. There's so many superstars in WWE um, that, that have come from NXT now. Uh, if you want to meet one that's not to return to NXT, I guess Roman Reigns would be would be the main one, I guess, because he's carrying the flag on the company. I suppose it would be fun to watch him come and have a match with Keith Lee. But, um, yeah, I, I, I guess Roman would, would be my guy. I, if, if someone's like that main high up the card... Um, I don't necessarily want to see them drop. The Fiend would be another one. Um, I don't see a need for him to go back down. So they'll be my top two. Um, I mean, Seth Rollins as well doesn't need to go back to NXT. The only reason someone should go back to NXT is if they've not got a spot on their main or on Raw or SmackDown at that point. So Finn Balor didn't. They brought him back down. That's perfectly fine. Tyler Breeze, absolute same. If you've got a role, then you don't need to come back down. I know Kevin Owens did for one night only, um, but um, I would not necessarily been in favour of him. Or maybe I would have been. I mean, Kevin Owens, for me, is, is always seems to be hit and miss when it goes to the booking department. He can be lost, sadly, on the on the Raw and SmackDown booking from time to time. But he's got a good program going with, with Seth Rollins right now. Uh, we just need some more direction of where that's going to lead to. But um, Rollins, Reigns, Wyatt, them three, definitely don't go back to NXT. Uh, last question here uh, from Ty World Order once again. Now, of course, we need an Impact Wrestling question. Where, what would this, what would this Q and A be without some Impact Wrestling talk? I, I do like talking about, about Impact Wrestling, by the way. Um, yeah, should OV find a new leader while Sammy is gone? If so, do one of the existing members step up, or should it be someone new to the company stable for Ohio by Ohio? Um, well, for me personally, looking at that is a great question. I would say that Jake Christ is usually the uh, number two and he was the uh the golden draw um he was almost like mini semi for a little while he's your guy if it's someone within ove if they've got a new signing that can come into the company to do that which would then uh be you know perhaps rivaling with sammy sammy callahan when he's back in i'm sort of on favor of that but i personally would prefer it to be jake i think that it's kind of time to see um, a Sammy versus Jake Christ uh, rivalry because they they were teasing it for a long time um, with the championship uh, at one point when when he was X Division champion and then of course Sammy became the world champion um, they teased it for the longest time and it didn't happen so for me I would like to see that play out so Jake Christ would be uh, my answer for you on that one but that's all from me this week anyway thank you for watching Ask SCW here on YouTube remember you can be involved on Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, or you can even drop a comment in this video. Leave the hashtag AskSCW. I will answer in the next video. And uh, yeah, make sure to follow everyone on Twitter that's asked a question. Let's grow the wrestling community together. Uh, it's good that we are all as one. I do appreciate you guys watching. It always means a lot. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time here on YouTube. All the best.